So the answer to this first question is just multiplying everything by 9 fifths and then adding 32 to both sides and you get what you see here. X is equal to 9 fifths Y plus 32. The answer to the next question is the same thing. We're really just saying a function of Y equals 9 fifths Y plus 32. A lot of times we'll say that instead of X equals, we'll say a function of Y. So next, when we plug the first function into the second function, they cancel each other out. We multiply 9 fifths times 5 ninths. Well, that's just 1. So we have x minus 32 plus 32. That all cancels out. We're left with just x. And that's special about inverse functions. Another way to think about it, x squared and square root of x are inverses of each other. What is the square root of x all squared? Well, just x because the inverses cancel out. Now, if we were to take the derivative of either of these two functions, so if we take the derivative of this one, we're going to get 9 fifths. And if we take the derivative of the first one, x prime, that would be 5 ninths. Sorry, the original one, not this one. y prime here would be 5 over 9 because I'd multiply each. That's a constant. Take the derivative. It's just the slope 5 ninths. So our derivatives are reciprocals or multiplicative inverses 5 ninths and 9 fifths. These two functions are inverses, play with the floating points a little bit. We'll see that the x and y's switch. 210 becomes 10, 2. Here this looks like it's over 2, up 0. This one is at over 0, up 2. So these are the three things that inverses have in common. They are reflected about the 45 degree line or y equals x. You can see that this point is just as far across that. So is that point. Total mirror around y equals x. Next, when we plug one function into another, everything cancels out and you're just left with x. And then most importantly, x and y switch. That's probably the biggest one. Here's a picture of our mirror line. So now we get into the things that we're really noticing. This slope here is very steep. Turns out that it's up 12 over 1. When we look at the other slope, it is a rise of 1 and a run of 12. So these are reciprocals of each other. Slope of 12, its reciprocal is 1 twelfth. 3, 1 third. 0, undefined. 3, back to 1 third. 12, 1 twelfth. But one thing to be careful of. The tangent had a slope of 12 at the point 2 twelve. The tangent had a slope of 1 12th at the point 12, 2. So this x is that y. This y is that x. So again, our x's and y's are switching. That is a key takeaway, which will cause you grief if you forget it later. Which of these are true? Inverse functions have inverse or reciprocal derivatives. Two related points on the inverse function have reciprocal tangent slopes where the x and y coordinates are swapped. 
Two related functions on the inverse function have opposite reciprocal. No, that's not true. It's not like negative one-half becomes positive two over one. They have the same sign. So if this was negative one-half, this would be negative two over one. And this last one was almost true. The derivative on f at x, let's say this is the point 1 half comma 1, 2, 3, 4, will have, will be 1 over the derivative at g prime, but not at x. Notice this would be the point 4 comma 1 half. So in here we would have to say g prime at f of x. So if this is an x value, then this is really going to be a y value. So be careful of that kind of thing. This value, these x's are not the same x. They are the switched x and y. So now as we look at this last question, Think really carefully about this. This is where you could take some good notes. We want if g of x equals the inverse of f of x. So these functions are inverses. Then g prime of x will equal 1 over f prime at g of x. So this is an x on the function g. This is a y on the function g. So those x are not the same. This is an x value. This is really a y value. So now as we think about this, select all of the following that are true. As soon as they tell us that f of 3 equals 1, if we're going to make ourselves a little table, x, f of x, then 3 would be the x and 1 would be the y. Well, since these are inverses, that also means that on the g function, the x is 1, and the g of x is the 3. So that's important. Now they're asking us, hey, what is g prime at negative 1? And I've got these wrong. This should be negative 1, making that negative 1, making that negative 1. Well, g prime of negative 1 will be 1 over the derivative of the f function, but not at negative 1. Instead, we're going to look for g of negative 1. Well, notice g of negative 1 was really 3. So we're really looking for g prime of negative 1 is 1 over the derivative when x is 3, turns out they gave us that. f prime of 3 is really 10. So that means our answer is 1 over 10. That's why that one was true. And this table demonstrates why that is true.